Most of this information comes from publication 946, How to Depreciate Property Tax Year 2022. You can find it on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement but just an outline of scaffolding other forms and schedules flowing into these line items, including the Schedule C, basically an income statement in and of itself, business income minus business expenses, giving us net business income, which would flow into line one income here of the income tax formula. The first page of the form 1040, noting that the Schedule C would flow into the Schedule 1, flowing into the first page of Form 1040, line number 8. The Schedule C is a profit or loss from business form, having an income statement format of income minus expenses. We're focusing this time on the expenses, specifically on the depreciation, remembering that even if you're on a cash-based system, if you have large purchases, you're going to have to deviate from the cash-based system. Why? Because the tax code forces you to generally to put them on the books as an asset, which you can't see in the tax return because we only have an income statement if you're talking about a Schedule C. But we're going to be able to depreciate them using the depreciation schedules, allocating the cost over the useful life in accordance with the matching principle and accrual concept. Although the tax code can get crazy and start deviating from that concept by using accelerated depreciation methods, 179 special depreciation and so forth. All right, that given, let's talk about an office in the home. We've got an office in the home. Uh, if you use part of your home as an office, you may be able to deduct depreciation on that part based on its business use. So meaning, now we have a home, we've got an office in the home, that's a business part of the home. The question then is going to be, do I get to deduct uh, the home office? So there's multiple things related to the deduction of the home office because you might have the utility bill that's paid for the entire home. You might have um, other, you know, water bill and so on that's paid for the entire home but you might be able to allocate a portion of it to the office, you would think, because it would be an ordinary and necessary business expense if you're allowed to have the home office. The other portion of that that might be applicable is depreciation, because normally the home is a personal asset. And for our income tax, normal tax standards, then we would think the only thing you'd get to deduct normally are those expenses that you incurred in order to generate revenue. There's a lot of exceptions to that general rule when we think about a Schedule A, for example, where we might be able to deduct the home mortgage interest and things like that, the property taxes and things like charitable deductions. Those are all kind of weird type of deductions that are deviations from the general rule of deducting uh, something that was consumed in order to generate uh, revenue. But the personal home, is personal so you would think in general you wouldn't be able to deduct the depreciation related to it but if you use the home as an office you would think you would get a portion of that depreciation as depreciation expense so right here we're focused on uh, the depreciation expense itself as part of in dovetailing on to that concept of a home office notice that if someone was renting a home then the rent itself that they're paying might be part of the home office deduction they wouldn't have depreciation it's only if they owned the home that then you've got this depreciation that might add into or factor into this uh, home office kind of situation so for more information about depreciating your home office you could see publication 587. so what property cannot be depreciated certain uh, property cannot be depreciated this includes land and certain exempted property so normally, when we think about things that are going to be depreciated, we're putting them on the books as an asset as opposed to expensing them because they're going to be long-lived type of items and we want to allocate the cost to the period that it's being consumed. However, when we think about land, it's not being consumed in human lifetimes because the land doesn't deteriorate as the building that sits on the land does as does every other kind of thing that we buy for business typically, like equipment, for example, furniture, and so on. So terms you may need to know. 
the glossary, we've got amortization, similar to depreciation, amortizing over time, a basis, that's kind of like the, the cost in essence of the property, goodwill, this is an intangible, a type of intangible uh, concept, intangible property, intangible property, can't touch it, it still has value, but it's intangible because you can't touch it, uh, remainder interest and term interest, okay, given that, let's jump into it, land, you cannot depreciate the cost of land because land does not wear out, become obsolete, or get used up. So although we are using the land to help generate revenue, the land hasn't been consumed. It's not going away to help generate revenue. And that's kind of the argument as to why we're not gonna allocate the cost of land over the useful, over the useful life, because in theory, the land's useful life is beyond our human useful life. 